All right. So we want this to be interactive and we want everyone to ask questions. Um, so if you do have any questions, please enter them into the chat box or use the reaction button at the bottom to just raise your hand and we'll be happy to get those answered for you. I see some folks are already joining the chat box. We have um, NC State's Institute for Advanced Analytics and High Community Web Agency. Awesome. If you wanna also share in the chat box where you're from, where you're joining um, in from, that is great. Let's see. Hello from BASA. Great to be with you. So let's make sure everyone is muted. We still have some folks joining us, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so with this year's International Women's Day theme being hashtag choose to challenge, um, the Research China Foundation is celebrating with uh, this virtual panel discussion, bringing together prominent women leaders uh, from across the Triangle region to share their perspectives, insights, and experiences in the workplace. Um, we'll connect with each speaker one by one and they'll introduce themselves and I'll follow with a few questions. And then we'll open the floor for the audience um, to ask questions as well. All right, um, so before we do get started, I did want to ask, um, how are you or your company uh, celebrating International Women's Day? Um, so if you can go ahead and add that to the chat box, that would be, Fantastic, so we can share some of that. I also did want to mention, um, if there is a question that we do ask a panelist um, that you would like to answer, um, you can add, also add that into the chat box and I'll check in on them and share them with everyone as well. So Amanda says, taking time to tell the woman in my life how awesome they are, that is beautiful. Morgan says, celebrating women business owners in the triangle. Absolutely. Right. So um, first up, we have Brandy Morales. Brandy Morales Espinal, who is the client delivery leader at Luminous Strategy. Um, Brandy, can you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, thank you, Anna. So as Anna mentioned, I'm Brandy Morales Espina, and I lead client delivery for Luminous Strategy, and we're located here in RTP. Um, so what we do at Luminous Strategy is we help our clients develop winning value propositions for their customers um, and their stakeholders so that they can understand what delivers differential value for their um, customers or stakeholders, along with identify what are those items for the future to focus on. Um, we do this, obviously, by helping our clients in the corporate world by asking the question, what is it that you do um, that helps your customers make more money with you? And then for our non-for-profit clients, we ask them, do your stakeholders get more by value by partnering with you? Um, prior to this, I worked at PwC for over a decade, serving financial services clients from things from business strategy to implementation. Um, I'm a North Carolinian um, for the most part. I've been here for the past 25 years. I've done all my schooling in different parts of North Carolina. So received an MBA from UNC Chapel Hill um, and then did have undergraduate degrees from UNC Charlotte um, within management information systems, international business and Spanish. And so I, I'm so honored to be here with this amazing group of women today as we celebrate this day.
apologies, was having a <laughs> technical difficulties. Um, but thank you, Brandy. Um, so what is something um, you wish you could say to your younger self or a younger woman considering a similar career? Um, so I, what I would say to my younger self considering a similar career, so that it's three things. So one is follow your passion. The second is make time for yourself. And the third is celebrate your wins. So when I say follow your passion, you know, I started my career in banking and I was going in trying to do the exact same things as my male counterparts did because it was um, primarily male or my peers. And I began to forget why I enjoyed the work that I do. And it was really because of my passion and which has le led me to consulting. I enjoy consulting all parts of it, the travel, the variety of the work. I mean, I even get excited going to a new airport in all honesty. And I think it's because of growing up, I moved around a lot. I lived in Germany one year, I could live in Georgia to North Carolina. And that variety is what drove me and why I get excited about doing the work that I do. And so the passion is key. Then the next thing is with all of that, I'm still a mom, I have kids, I have a partner, and I really had to learn how to manage my time meaning manage up, manage my leader and manage down. And we as women, we tend to manage down obviously because we're leaders, but we forget to manage up. And that's very important. And, and I got that advice from two women leaders early on in my career. Um, my direct leader was um, a Lebanese American woman. She had four kids. Interestingly enough, she had twins. I have twins. So she told me, learn how to manage me teach me how to work with you so that you can show up your best self every day. That's what I need. And that was important. And then the last thing is about celebrating your wins. I mean, celebrate those small things from sending that email you didn't want to send, knocking two things off of your checklist for the day. Because we as women tend to celebrate everyone. We show up for our kids. We show up for our partners. We celebrate our friends. We're the biggest cheerleader for everyone, but forget to celebrate ourselves. So if, if anyone's watched Grey's Anatomy and seen Christina Yang and Meredith Grey dance it out at the end, whether because they rocked a surgery or something, I mean, dance it out at the end of the day because you, you did something great. Revel in a book, revel in that moment. I mean, just celebrate you. So that is beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, um, we did have a question come in. Um, what is your advice on how uh, to manage up or managing up? Yeah, so advice on managing up. Um, one of the things, think about the things that you would, would like to get out of every opportunity, whether it is a project or in that role. And so what are the things that are your non-negotiables, meaning you, you, you know will not make you happy, no way around it. And then what are the things you hope to gain? So having a candid conversation with your leader about, hey, these are the two to three items that I know I'm good at and I wanna stretch and grow and help them understand what are the things you can work around to help you be successful. That is fantastic. Okay. And what are the challenges of succeeding in your career in a virtual format? Yeah, so that, that's a good one. Um, what I would say is we were fortunate to be able to, we had recently closed on an engagement with an innovative technology organization um, early in the pandemic. So basically we had went and saw them, we were ready to kick things off and then travel stopped the world stop. And so we had to think about how we were gonna deliver the value that we intended to for our clients in this new virtual environment. You know, our approach is unique already because we did some, we have a hybrid engagement approach, meaning we do some of it already virtual um, and then we do some of it in person kind of when we need to be more collaborative. So we really had to take a step back and think about how we were gonna deliver the same value to our clients in this virtual environment, when what that meant was rethinking our engagement approach so that we can continue to give the same value, collaborate with the client, also understanding that there was a lot of competing priorities now with that home. So what we did is we sent things out earlier to them, you know, when we had meetings, right? So typically if it was a week, we send it out maybe two weeks 
understanding they were competing with a partner and I'm working for next to them either at the kitchen table, they were managing kids school schedules or even, you know, managing overall the pandemic. Um, and our client was a global engagement. And so we were working with a client potentially sometimes um, in North America and having calls with them in North America. Um, and earlier that morning, we could have had a call with a client in Europe um, and then closing it out in Asia. So understanding this time zone, understanding the dynamics, but still being able to help them understand that we wanted to deliver value for them um, and also the humanity of being able to de deliver value for them throughout a pandemic. Um, and so we were able to do that. We were able to help develop those relationships, but it took some pivoting on our way um, side to rethink how we delivered, whether it's meetings, um, whether it's how we communicated with them and just understand the humanity of everything that they were going through. Um, and so we were thankful to be able to pivot and we were thankful to be able to think of it in a different way. That was great. Thank you so much for sharing, Brandy. I did want to um, share some of the responses that we got um, online as well in the chat for how some companies are celebrating International Women's Day and um, Cree Wolfspeed is doing an internal choose to challenge challenge and celebrating our company, our, our woman in our company. Um, Ed says, acknowledging the accomplishments of our amazing women who are leading us. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, so now we're going to go on to our next panelist, Janie Zurichy, um, who is an environmental engineer at Cree Wolf Speed. And can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm happy to be here. Um, I work for, I'm an environmental engineer at Cree Wolf Speed. Um, I also hold a leadership role in our women's initiative, which is our um, women's employee resource group here at Cree that's been around for a few years. Um, my you know, education background, I have a degree, a bachelor's in geology and a master's in environmental engineering. And that's what brought me down here. I did go to Duke, which I know is a Know, it's a bomb to toss out into this room. I know there's a lot of opinions out there about that, but I've been down in the triangle for uh, over seven years now. I stuck around after Duke brought me down here. Um, and at Cree, I work on the team that's kind of making sure that we're doing the right thing in our manufacturing sites here, you know, um, complying with the local regulations and then also challenging and encouraging you know, environmental improvement projects um, in our facility, as well as dabbling with meeting women across our company. Um, we are an electrical engineering, you know, based company, um, but, you know, I get to show a little bit of spice from the environmental side too, which is not have a lot of visibility in. Absolutely. And can you tell us what accomplishment um, you're most proud of in your career? Yeah. Um, one of, I talked about going to Duke. Uh, one of the biggest accomplishments and hardest decisions I made actually was to leave a PhD program with my master's and go into industry. Um, I was four years into the program and had a lot of great mentors and learned so much there. Um, but I kind of hit this crossroads of, I have the grit to finish this. I know I can do it, but at what cost and what are, what are my end goals? So I had this moment of reassessing do I want to double down and do this and, you know, maybe stay away from those spaces where I do flourish, where I get to have this collaboration. I get to be in meetings with a lot of people rather than the sole chemical laboratory experience. So I'm proud that I was able to do it. It was one of the most difficult decisions because when you set your mind to something, you want to totally go through with it. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been at Cree three years now, and it's been a great experience to get in here and and see change and, and make change happen in industry. Absolutely. Absolutely. And can you tell us what it means um, to you to do work in the Triangle region? Yeah, that's a tricky question. Um, so I can give the example of my experience, you know, surrounding academia, too. Um, so Cree actually was founded out of a uh, PhD dissertation at NC State. So we have ties directly to there. 
And then we recruit from all around, you know, all the universities. We have so many great universities around here to get some um, intern programs in and everything like that. Um, Cree started partnership, partnering with um, NCANT too and started a scholarship program there. So it's this really cool connection between industry and academia is what I think I would say. And a mix of the transplants and everyone else in between, you meet a lot of different people on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we actually had a question come in. Um, do you feel that we are approaching parity for women in science careers or is there still a long way to go? Wow. Um, I can tell you my experience. Um, okay. I don't think that we've, we're approaching there. I don't think that we're there yet. Um, that's one of the reasons why, you know, Cree has started this women's initiative um, ERG in our company is to connect women and, and get us all our minds in the room and make sure it's a, it's a great place for women to work um, yeah. but, and, and connect all of those. Um, but no, I don't, I don't think we're there yet. I think that there's certainly the environmental engineering field is much more equal. I think there's a lot of women that maybe it's more accessible. It's a newer field. I don't know the background behind that, but there's certainly others like computer science, computer engineering, mm -hmm. um, electrical engineering that are still have a ways to go, but that's right. outside of my scope of work. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Um, and does anyone else have any other questions? Um, you can always, we can always come back to them if you just put them into the chat. Um, but thank you so much, Janie. Um, so next up, we have Dr. Paulette Dillard, uh, president of Shaw University. Um, can you please share a little bit about yourself? Uh, good afternoon. First of all, thank you for having me uh, as part of this incredible event. Uh, I am the 18th president of Shaw University in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, Shaw University is the oldest of the historically black colleges and universities in the state of North Carolina. I have been with Shaw since 2012, and I have served in a number of uh, roles since being here. I have been a professor of biological sciences, I have been a department chair, a dean, um, vice president of academic affairs, and now uh, the president of, of the university. Um, I hold a um, BA degree uh, in biological sciences, uh, a master's in biology, as well as an MBA and a PhD in biological sciences. Uh, three of those degrees earned at historically black colleges and universities uh, for which I am extremely uh, proud. Um, I've always wanted to be a scientist, um, but each time I uh, had my hands wet and deep into the sciences, I ended up in a position where I was administrating for the sciences and I never quite understood that until I realized what a difference that made in um, forging careers for other women. And so I think my destiny has been uh, to do just that. And so again, I'm extremely uh, excited to be here on International uh, Women's Day. Thank you so much. Um, and what is um, something you would say to your younger self or a younger woman considering a similar career? Uh, th that's a very interesting question because you know I've I've not had like a a single career. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that I'm the 18th president of Shaw University uh, was uh, a career that I sort of fell into because my, I, I spent 25 years in the field of diagnostic medicine. And so I worked for um, uh, great companies, international clinical labs, Smith Klein Beecham, uh, clinical laboratories, and of course, Quest Diagnostics. And in those uh, 25 years, I spent a lot of time um, 
understanding the causes and the, the ways that you go about identifying uh, the causes of disease. So I love science. And then as I indicated earlier, even in my role as a scientist, I kept finding myself being promoted to uh, positions of, of leadership. And I was uh, bold enough to believe that I could do anything um, I wanted to do because I've had great women telling me all of my life, you know, that, you know, why not? And so, uh, so I say to, uh, to young women looking to have a uh, career, as Brandy said earlier, figure out what you're passionate about. Um, do what you want to do because you want to do it and not because of any preconceived notions about what you're capable of. And connect with other people. See somebody doing something that you find interesting and, you know, and ask to tag along. You know, take risk. You know, you know, know that everything is not going to work out perfectly, but be willing to do it anyway and learn from everything that you do uh, so that you can continue to perfect your, your craft. And always, always remember to bring somebody along with you. Uh, that is such a critical thing to do, but go for it. I believe you can do anything you put your mind to. That is some great advice. Thank you so much. Um, so being of staying within the same, um, I guess, question or, or category, like what are some of the biggest challenges that you think women face today um, when it comes to career changes or um, asking for a raise? I think women uh, face, you know, challenges around, anytime women are assertive, or, or change careers or ask for raises, there's this notion that you're being aggressive and, um, and intimidating. And uh, those same characteristics in a male would not be thought about twice. Uh, so I say to, to women anticipating career changes or asking for a raise, you've earned it, you deserve it and go for it and do not be sidetracked by uh, comparisons and, um, and, and the fear of uh, being perceived as being you know, overly you know, aggressive or not being a team you know, player. Those are not things that uh, mean that you have to reduce what you believe is your value and your worth. So stand your ground, you know, know that you have every confidence that you deserve, you know, everything that you're asking for. And career change is not bad. Um, when, when individuals tell you that, you know, it doesn't show a uh, stability, uh, but remember what Jane said, you know, um, she was in a PhD program, but recognized that, you know, where she wanted to be was, making things happen at the bench. So do it, you know, don't let, you know, someone else's notion about your path, you know, set your course. So I just say, you know, if it, if it feels like the thing that you need to do, or if you think your value is not being appreciated, then ask for what you think uh, you deserve and don't settle for anything else. Absolutely, that is, thank you for sharing. Um, we did have a question come in through the chat. Um, someone asked, always, um, always bring someone with you. What, is that, what does that mean to always bring someone with you? Um, um, many times um, we, we have an opportunity uh, to uh, serve in a role that, you know, is, um, you know, so influential and you have the ability uh, to promote, mentor, or work closely with another individual. You know, do that. Bring somebody else along. Be willing to mentor, coach, 
um, put in a, a recommendation, be willing to recognize, you know, talent and potential and be willing to stand up for that person and bring them along as you go. And I think that's something that is undervalued and underutilized. And I think for women, it is so critical that we're able to do. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. All right. Um, we also have another question. Um, let's, let's see, do you see women doing this for other women and has it changed in your journey? Um, I see women doing it for, uh, for other women, um, you know, more so uh, now uh, than in the past. But if you think about it, in the past, there weren't very many women, you know, in, in positions to be able to bring others along. And that certainly, you know, has changed. And I will tell you, um, many of, of the successes I have had have been because I've been pulled along, you know, by, you know, by, by other women, even in um, uh, working in the clinical laboratory industry. I remember the, a woman that, you know, that had me involved in mergers and acquisitions and new startups, you know, because it was a skill that, that she thought would be you know, beneficial, you know, to me. And as I've come along the way, now, the one thing I will tell you, when I came through the scientific ranks, there were not very many women uh, that I can look back on the, the science side, the bench side, uh, and say that, you know, they um, uh, pulled me along. But in life in general, in in churches and other organizations, I've always had strong women that served as mentors. Uh, and, um, and I still remember uh, the provost at, at, at my first school. I still remember my freshman convocation speech. Uh, that's how much you know, influence she had on me. Uh, and, and she's been uh, passed away for several years. But these are the kind of things that make you know, an impression on individuals and you don't know, you know, how many women you are influencing by stepping up and by, you know, being on panels like today. Uh, these are all essential kinds of things that we, we do now. And, um, and it's something that we need to continue to do. Thank you so much um, for that message. We do have, one more question that came through um, and then we'll move on to the next panelist. Um, do you see women supporting each other cross-culturally more so than in the past? Oh, that's a very, very interesting uh, question. Uh, cross-culturally, um, I think that there is still work to be done. Um, I think that within culture, we tend to do more of it than is done cross-culturally. And I think that's an area that, um, uh, that, that uh, needs some work. Uh, when you think about the early movements of women's suffrage and uh, those kinds of activities that benefited women at large, you had women uh, coming together of all cultures around that, that effort. But in the actual day-to-day -day mentoring um, and those kinds of things, there's still opportunities to get better at it in terms of, of, of cultural um, uh, uh, mentoring and joining together in efforts that benefit um, all members of the culture as opposed to being uh, more uh, directed toward one culture over another. So I think that that's, uh, that's a great place to begin to have greater conversations about how we are better able to have the cross-cultural courageous conversation 
that make us better at, at, at doing that. Absolutely. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So next up, we have um, Angela Liu, who's the operations manager at Unity Web Agency. Angela, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, Anna. Thanks for having me here. I'm really happy to be here today. And um, I, I really love all the points that all the ladies Absolutely. before me have made. <laughs> um, I I also grew up in North Carolina. Um, I went to NC State. I studied industrial engineering. And by the end of college, I decided I did not want to be an engineer. And so I was seeking other opportunities to see what else I could do with myself. So at this point in my career, I'm, I call, call myself a strategic operational consultant. <laughs> and um, for Unity Web Agency, as their operations manager, I basically apply those skills. Um, but I also help other businesses on the side. Okay, um, and what accomplishment are you most proud of in your career? Honestly, figuring out what I would love to do has really been, I think, my biggest accomplishment. And um, for me, that was a real journey because mm -hmm. as I mentioned, I went to industrial, I studied industrial engineering and I had the potential to be an engineer, but as um, I believe Dr. Dillard was saying, you know, um, it, you really got to find what you love and do that. And so I went and worked for an organization where I got to move around the organization, trying different roles and being diff parts of different areas of the business and learning about what each of those areas of business needed to have from each other in order to be successful. And I never loved any of those roles individually, <laughs> but they all showed me a lot of different faces of a business and what a business needs. And um, it also gave me the opportunity to be a consultant for um, one of the roles. And um, eventually I uh, discovered that what I really love is I love consulting. <laughs> um, and I love solving strategic business challenges. Um, I consider myself a finance and business nerd. So now because of the various experiences I've had, I get to speak from a place of experience um, in the consulting that I do with organizations. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that honestly, like I really celebrate that as probably the biggest accomplishment for me because for many years I was quite confused and lost as to what direction to go with myself. Well, that is so great. I'm, I'm glad that you were able to hone in on, on what you love. Um, and what advice would you give to a woman um, changing careers? Um, I would say if you're looking to change your career and you don't know what direction to go in, think about what it was that you did in prior roles that you really loved and what you enjoyed, right? It might not have been the work. It might've been the people. It might not have been that. It could have been the culture, right? Um, what, did, what do you do in your free time? What do you do for volunteering if you volunteer at all, right? Um, even in your spare time, you know, whatever you do for recreation, how are you interacting with those people? And what kind of role do you tend to fulfill with those people in those communities? You know, those are all indicators as to what you might love to do, right? And if you can sort of pick from among your experiences and somehow paint a picture with that as to what that looks like, you might actually discover what direction to sort of take yourself in next. That's actually a little bit of what I did. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> hopefully that helps any other women out there kind of wondering what direction to take themselves in um, and uh, help them land their next awesome dream job. <laughs> um, and if you do kind of know what direction you're going in, I would say, um, you know, think about, you know, it's kind of funny, like from a business standpoint, they call it your target market, you know, but, <laughs> you know, as somebody looking for a job opportunity, right, it's kind of a similar thing where think about what kind of environment you want to be working in, right? What kind of culture do you like working with large organizations? Do you like working in small organizations and teams? You know, um, what are the cultural values you want to be working with or what kind of mission do you want to support, you know? and try to get involved with communities and activities, events that those kinds of organizations and professionals or business owners will be in. Um, just to share from my own personal experience, I, uh, when I was going through my uh, search before I landed at Unity, um, 
I decided I wanted to work for an organization that was trying to make a positive impact in the world. I was pretty open to what that could be, but I just wanted to make sure it was my my skills and energy were, were going towards an organization that's trying to be a positive impact, right? It's not just here trying to solve a problem and make money ultimately, right? <laughs> um, and I knew that I wanted to work for a small organization. Um, prior, I had worked for an organization that had been somewhere between 50 to 150 some people at any given time. And I realized I still wanted to be in a smaller team. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I want to be in a really small organization, um, be part of a really small team. Um, and I somehow landed at a B Corp community um, event <laughs> where um, I met other people in the B Corp community. And um, that's where I met Elisa Her, the owner of Unity Web Agency, and the rest is history from there. So <laughs> um, definitely in-person networking can be extremely powerful. You know, go circle in the right communities to find you the right opportunities. That is fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Um, I have a question that came through. Um, given your experience um, with different sizes of businesses. What do you think of the current startup landscape here in the triangle? Honestly, I think we have a very strong entrepreneurial spirit um, in this area. And um, it's, I, I would say, especially um, since I've joined the Unity team, um, I have come to observe many more startups actually. I think we have a very thriving community and as well as um, a lot of the co-working spaces seem to have um, a number of small startups, little initiatives, mm -hmm. you know, stuff that most people, you know, in the broader scheme may not have heard of, right? But these are people who are dedicating so much time and energy, you know, to these passions and these missions to, you know, make changes in some great way. And um, I think what we have here is great in the triangle. Like, I'm glad to be part of this area. <laughs> Absolutely. Um... Thank you for sharing. Um, I have another question that came through. Um, how does one market oneself for a career in a new industry that they're passionate about, but aren't necessarily qualified for? Um, how can strong interest and willingness to learn about an industry pre be transferred to a resume or cover letter? That's a really great question. Um, I definitely, uh, <laughs> I can definitely resonate with that challenge. <laughs> um, you know, I would say that that's where the power of networking in person, especially with small business owners, can be extremely helpful. Um, my resume, if you had been looking at my resume prior, um, would have shown a lot more in, say, technical, technical consulting skills as well as project management. And I knew that I didn't want to do either. I wanted to do something that was a little bit more of a blend. And because it's not something you go to school and get a degree in, it's something that you really synthesize and meld from your experiences. Only you can really speak to that. But the way the, uh, you know, the usual job searching process goes, it can be really hard to translate that to um, your resume, right? So I think on a resume, your best shot is really um, your objective or your executive summary, right? Like to sort of synthesize and summarize your, your key experiences and then say, what is it is, what it is, you know, what's that key value proposition, if you want to call it that, that you offer and that you want to be able to fulfill, right? Um, but even more effective, in my opinion, is if you're trying to move yourself in a different direction and you, um, you know, you're, you're really struggling to have your resume really land in front of the right people for the right opportunities, um, get out there and network, you know, like, especially in the, the virtual format right now, it's tough. Um, but there's still a lot of virtual events going on, you know, and if you can become part of, um, you know, the, or the groups and the communities who <clears throat> are, you know, like small business owners and such, and I mean, it depends on your, your net, your, your value and what kind of team member you want to be, right? But if you can network with small business owners and speak to them directly and, just put yourself out there, say what it is that you want to do. You know, when you introduce somebody like, oh yeah, I'm so-and-so, I do this, you know, looking for a great opportunity where I can help an organization in this particular way, right? Now you're putting yourself out there and you're, you're selling yourself and you might finally find the right business owner who's going to be like, you know what, you're exactly what I need right now. <laughs> Let's work together, you know? All right. Thank you for sharing that. Um, we have time for one more question. 
Um, so you've made some sh major shifts in your career, shifts that many of us may be nervous or scared to make. What inspired your courage to make those shifts? You know, I, um, <laughs> it's a, that's a really interesting question. Um, when I, uh, so I worked for an organization for six years and that's where I got the vast majority of my experiences. And it was a great experience. You know, I, like I said, I got to learn a lot from that organization and that team. There were some really great mentors there. Um, and I'm gonna be really grateful for all the experiences and, and the people there that I worked with. Um, and when I, when I left though, I was burnt out. I was honestly burnt out because even though I had the opportunity to move among different roles, there was nothing that was hitting home and nothing that I really loved, right? And so I was pushing myself in many of the roles to you know, achieve performance results that I needed to achieve, but I wasn't really getting nourished from a passion standpoint. And so when I stopped working there, I was so drained and I was so determined that I was like, I never want to do that ever again. <laughs> like I just, I literally was in such a low point in my, my professional career that I was just like, I'm never gonna let myself do that again, you know? And I had to really, really sit down with myself and ask myself, well, if I am going to do something, then what, you know, what would that be? What would that look like? If I get to write the rules, if I get to write the book and say, this is what it's going to be for me, what would that look like, you know? And that's really where my courage came from. It was really just saying, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to let myself be tired or miserable at the end of the day. I'm going to make sure, I'm gonna take, make sure that I'm happy. You know, I'm going to make sure that I'm fulfilled through what I'm doing and the way I'm being of service to my team. Thank you so much, Angela. You're welcome. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, next up we have uh, Chair Brenda Howerton with Durham Board of County Commissioners. Hi, Brenda, how are you? Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Can you hello. Hi. Hi. I'm great. <laughs> I had to <laughs> find the mute button. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. It, it happened to me earlier. Um, so, uh, why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about uh, what you do? Well, thank you so much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I am County Commissioner of Durham County, and I'm the chair of the board. Um, I've been a commissioner now for 13 years. My original um, career has been a consultant. I've been a um, executive coach and consultant for probably about 30 years. And I ran for county commissioner um, in 2008 and won. And I've run four times since that and, and won again, over and over again. And uh, it's a very demanding job. It's, it's a commitment to service. Uh, and um, when you talk about county government, county go government is about the people. It's about the service. Uh, it can be from um, support, helping people to have food in their house, helping to find a place for them to live, to economic development, to making sure that jobs are available for our, our individuals to supporting the schools and, uh, the, and the universities in our area. So it's a wide range of responsibility and, um, and I enjoy doing it. That's fantastic. So um, what does it mean to you to work, uh, to do your work in the Triangle area? Well, you know, Durham is, um, the ability to amplify voices, uh, the ability to connect with the triangle all across the business community from Durham, Chapel Hill, um, Wake County, um, even statewide. You know, I mm -hmm. have, I've been blessed that I've been able to serve as a president of all 100 counties as a commissioner. Um, and that was amazing to be able, for Durham, I was the first um, person, African-American or whatever, first person to ever be able to serve as the president of the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. 
Wow. And that meant that I represented all the counties on issues that relate to all the counties. Um, managed a board of 50 county commissioners. And that was huge. And That's amazing. <laughs> and connected with people in DC about issues that relate to, to county government. So it's so it's it's a it's a fulfilling job that you know one of my prayers used to be that when I lay my head down or when I leave this world that I feel used up be careful what you ask for. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So so you know with all the with all of what you do, what are what is maybe one thing if you can point out that you're most proud of of doing for Durham County? You know, the, the thing that comes to mind for me, when I ran for county commissioner, the thing that was my heart thought were uh, young people. I was coaching at NCCU. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned to the young people that I was coaching, I was thinking about running for office. And they looked at, stared at me for a moment and go, what's your platform? I said, well, I haven't figured it out yet. They said, we'll help you. Wow. So they, we came to my house and we got around in the floor and they helped to put my platform together. So it was about young people and what was needed. So when I became the president of the association, I had to come up with a, uh, an initiative. Mm -hmm. And my initiative ended up being that all children thrive. Out of all 100 counties that our children thrive. And what that means is that children can't thrive if the parents are not thriving. The parents don't have resources that they need to take care of them, then children can't thrive. And today, that initiative is still ongoing, even though it's been several years since I was the president, that initiative is still ongoing in counties all across the state of North Carolina. So I guess that is one of the things that I'm very, very proud of. That is fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. You're welcome, you're welcome. Wow. Just, uh... I want to give it a couple seconds if anyone else wants uh, has a question for Chair Howerton. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Oh, well, we do have one. <laughs> what would you say to a woman wanting to run for office? I would say um, take more chances. Don't take your, don't talk yourself out of doing what it is that you want to do. Um, be willing to make mistakes because we learn from mistakes. And women are, women are, are courageous and exercise your courage and move forward. And don't let, don't let anyone override your trust and faith in your ability to do what you feel that you need to do. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, okay, we have um, another question. What do you think the state of woman-owned businesses is like in Durham or the Triangle today? Well, I think we all know that with the pandemic, um, women-owned businesses, all small, particularly small businesses, are hurting uh, tremendously and. Uh, we're hoping that on the way out of this, more uh, small women-owned businesses will develop and um, be really, um, uh, really produce productive because we we need small businesses have always been what supports our communities, and we need those. I agree. Thank you. And um, what's the best advice a mentor has given you? Um, trust yourself, because you do have the answers. Just trust yourself. I love that. Yeah. 
Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. My pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So um, last, but certainly not least, we have um, Shelly Westman, a Senior Transformation Leader with Cree Wolf Speed. Hi, Shelly. Hi, thanks for having me today. Yeah, thanks for holding on tight. <laughs> um, so tell us about yourself. Sure, so I currently serve as the Senior Transformation Leader for Cree Wolf Speed. Um, and before doing that, I have really made a career out of reinventing myself. I started my career practicing law. I did that for five years and found out that I hated it. I was fortunate enough to join IBM where I spent 18 years in 12 different and very unique roles. And then I moved to Ernst & Young as a partner in their cybersecurity and risk practice for three years before uh, joining Cree. So I have done a lot of different things in my career. Wow. Um, okay, so um, what is something you would say to um, your younger self or a younger woman considering a similar um, career path? So, you know, when I look across all of the things that I've learned and all of my different moves, there's really, you know, four things that stand out for me and how I've tried to live, you know, my actions every day. And the first is really um, take action. You know, my personal motto is 100% fast and 80% right. And I have always acted that way. And, and, um, the point is that you can't wait until you have all of the information to make a decision, not in the world of business. Things are moving really fast. So I have tried um, and would remind my younger self, you know, to, to be 100% fast and 80% right. The second thing is say yes to things outside your comfort zone. Every opportunity that came up, I said yes to. Whether I could do the role, I always knew I could do the role, but there was um, definitely roles where I had no experience and I would always say yes and figure out how to do it afterwards. Um, another, the third one is really, you, you can't please everybody. You will never please everybody. So only worry about pleasing yourself. I think in the start of my career, I really worried about pleasing everybody and realized it's not possible no matter what you do. So as long as you stay true to yourself, that's what really um, matters. And then the last one is, and, and maybe this one's a little bit controversial, but you know, I, I was asked to do roles that I had no idea and no experience in, and I always faked it. If they said, can you do it? I said, absolutely. And then I'd call my husband and be like, I can't believe they gave me this job. I mean, one of the jobs I was managing a $3 billion budget, I don't even subtract my checkbooks at home, literally. Then they gave me cybersecurity. I was one, I changed my password eight times in a row to get it back to the same password. So, you know, the reason I was getting these jobs is because I knew how to get things done. But did I have moments of uncertainty when I got these new roles? Absolutely. But did I ever let that on externally to my bosses, my peers? No. And, and I faked it, you know, until I got caught. And, and do you have a tip or two for overcoming, you know, that, I guess, you know, quote unquote, imposter syndrome or, or you know? I, I would say it's practice. You know, it's really practice. It's a muscle that you have to use to get comfortable with. And so I make a game out of a lot of things. You know, what can I get people to say yes to? And I, I've come up with some outrageous requests over the years that I've wanted to meet somebody or someone to come and talk for free to my group and I've negotiated them down and I've just practiced you know and doing these things that are outside my comfort zone so they become inside of your comfort zone and so now I no longer think that those are anything abnormal and they don't make me nervous mm -hmm. in the least that's awesome that's great um we had um that's Fantastic advice. Thank you, Shelly. Um, we had uh, someone send some advice through the chat um, in regards to whether I should accept those opportunities. Um, act with the confidence of a mediocre white man offered the same opportunity. 
Um, so uh, we also had another question come in. Do you look for opportunity or a chance that someone assigns you? I, I would say for me, very much both. And, you know, I have definitely been criticized during the course of my career for wearing my ambitions on my sleeve. And I decided that's right. You know, I am going to tell everybody what I want to do next, because that is the way people have to know what you're looking for in order to be able to place you. So some of those opportunities I very much pushed for. And some of them were given to me because by that point I had established my reputation as somebody who could get things done regardless of what they were asking me to do. So it was very much a combination. Okay. And um, is there an accomplishment that you're most proud of in your career? Yeah, I would say, you know, for most of my career, I gave no fact to the thought that I was a woman. No thought to the fact I was a woman. I said that wrong. You know, I, I went to work every day. I did my job. I expected to be promoted. I was promoted many times. Um, and then I got in the area of cybersecurity and saw that only 10% of the industry was made up of women. And I started a group at IBM that grew from 200 members to 1,200 members and is still going strong today. And we started things like Cyber Day for Girls where we're teaching young girls about cybersecurity skills. And you know that really is my proudest accomplishment because it's something that I left and has lived on and really served a, a very long purpose at this point. That is amazing. Very nice. Thank you so much for sharing, Shelley. Um, want to give it a couple of minutes to see if anyone has any other questions for Shelly. Um, if not, um, we are reaching our end point. Um, while we wait for those um, questions to come in, um, I did want to share quickly, um, you know, you will be able to see the, a replay of this on YouTube. And we will be sharing um, some of these quotes and comments that our panelists shared today on our social media account as well. Um, so you can um, engage with us using the hashtags um, that we have on the presentation, RTP Engaged, RTP DEI, um, IWD RTP, and IWD 2021. Um, so if uh, no one has any other questions, I want to thank our panelists again for joining us today. It's been great. I've learned a lot. Um, and happy International Women's Day. Same to you. Thank you so much. And thank Thanks you for, for sharing your experiences as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.